The topic of uh, the Kamin Gespräch, how do you call that in, in English? Chimney Fireside talk. Chim fireside oh, chat. Fireside Thank chat. you. The topic is called impact investing, or in German, wirkungsorientiertes investieren. And the question is, how can we shift? How can we shift from the current way we measure investing or econ economics or um, anything that you know is worth on this planet that makes the world go round to include that impact? And that's the question. And I would like to have um, Dr. Ricard give us his insights because he is uh, one of the leading investors and uh, players in this field. Uh, he's been supporting us for the past five years, I think we've met five years ago. And he was one of the first. He actually totally understood me. When I came from the United States seven, six years ago, and I uh, told people try, you know, try to find out who could spell impact investing, no one could, but he could. And that was a rarity. So. Uh, Andreas, why don't you please, um, you know, give us your insight as to what does have to happen in order for us to shift toward measurement criteria that would allow us to aggregate and move the kind of capital? Because I think this is a key question, measurement criteria, m metrics. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, maybe it makes sense that I very briefly explain why we are dealing with impact investment. Because um, I'm running Finio, which is a think tank and consultancy for strategic philanthropy. So we are based in Berlin, having now 40 people. So that's also internationally quite a big thing for that topic. Um, and we are coming, and you just showed this, this metrics, we are coming from the philanthropy side. Um, so the people we are dealing with and we are supporting are philanthropists, foundations, corporates who want to do good uh, with philanthropic money, minus 100% uh, uh, minus return. Um, so. Um, we are supporting them, and impact investing is interesting for us out of two reasons. A, um, if you want to do philanthropy in a strategic way, you have to know what is the impact. So at the core of our business is impact measurement, and that's what you need when you talk about impact investing. The other reason is um, the people we are supporting, in particular high net worth individuals and, and philanthropists, they are very fascinated by the idea of impact investing, so that they can use their money, their wealth, to do good, alongside with the financial return investment. And that's probably a momentum we really can use for, as you asked for that, for really having a complete new market developing. Um, so that's the good news. The bad news is there is no market yet. Um, I mean, you have mentioned all these big numbers and I love that. Um, but the reality, at least in Germany, is there is no real impact investing market. Um, so there are a few boutiques, I think there are three investment funds so far who are investing into impact investing targets. And if you summarize their investment volume, I think about 50 million. So that's nothing. Um, it de all depends on what's the definition of impact investing. But if we use a very strict definition saying impact investing means that you have the attention to achieve social impact, alongside with the financial return investment, then you have to be very strict on the measurement and the criteria. Um, and that's the reason why we are at the moment are not talking about a big market. And the question is, how can we develop a real market? And that's why we are always saying we really have to introduce market mechanisms and market players. And that basically influences all the different levels. So on the one side, we have to have a culture of social entrepreneurs, social businesses. So we have to invest into incubators so that we do see startups. Uh, we have to invest into scaling up those approaches. And we also have to invest into um, partnerships with the small social entrepreneurs and the big players. In Germany, we're talking about the Wohlfahrtsstaat, so all the welfare state organizations. So they are the ones who really can scale up things. So this is on the side on the investees. And then we are talking about the investors. Um, so there is huge appetite. I just recently spoke on a Deutsche Bank forum. Uh, about, there were about 50 uh, family officers, and they all came to me and said, OK, we have the money, where can we invest? Actually, there are no so many targets, but 
the appetite is there, now we have to be careful that we are not channeling the money into the wrong targets, because then we are creating a bubble and that would be a disaster. So we have to be carefully select where to invest into the money, um, and we also have to accept failures at the beginning. So that's the reason why we have to be very open about the expectations, in particular regarding the financial return investment, because it might well be that you're investing into a social business and to have no financial return, but I think it's worth to do that. Um, and finally, if we really want to build a market, we also need the right intermediaries. Um, so we need institutions like Fineo and several of them to do the impact measurement from an independent point of view, not from the investors or investor side, from the independent point of view. We need market intelligence, so where are the gaps, where are the niches where you can invest? And finally, we also need maybe a kind of stock exchange to reduce the transaction costs when it comes to the matching. So there are a lot of different things which you need, and they are all not there yet, but I'm also an optimistic person, um, and so I'm smiling because I do see that there is momentum and there is potential that we can build this ecosystem for impact investing. Thank you, and this was a very, <laughs> thank you. A very eloquent and detailed explanation of impact investing the way it is understood in Germany. That's However, true. I know that uh, Johan and us, we, have, uh, we expand that definition. We believe that every single investment has and must have a social and an environmental impact and have, be financially sustainable. And that's a key, key, it's key to the transformation that we are about to, uh, to occur, to happen. Yes, if we go by the definition of of uh, uh, Muhammad Yunus, who said social business, a social entrepreneur or a social investor is one that invests capital and reinvests the, re uh, the revenue, uh, the what you call it, the rendite, profit. the profit again without having the investor participate on the upside. We have learned that this has prevented the market from aggregating the necessary capital to really have every investment be an impact investment. Because I remember back in the mid-90s, and uh, Tom, would you please stand up here or show yourself? This is Tom Schultz, my very dear husband, and uh, one of uh, he's the person who created the first internet stock uh, that went public on the German stock exchange back in the mid-90s, 98 actually, uh, the, well, 97 that went public. Well, of course, if you go by this definition, starting investing in, a, in an internet company is not a social, an impact investment. It's not, because it's, it's internet, it's technology, right? Now, think 20 years later and look at the impact that an internet connection has on the refugees, for instance, that now know who, where the people are who would kill them or where the routes are, who get through the internet, WhatsApp, and all those amazing applications where to find help, where, you know, that guides them you know, away from, from famine and from war. So let's help each other here, expand the definition and have every investment become an, an impact investment on a social, environmental, and of course, financial sustainability side. And now I would like to ask a question, our extraordinary guest tonight, uh, Professor Töpfer, who doesn't need an introduction, just like everyone else here. What is it that, from your perspective, your, needs to happen or is or and is currently occurring to help aggregate more capital toward this direction. Yeah, thank you very much. You see, I had the chance to stay for eight years in Africa. I was responsible for the United Nations Environment Program that is by France headquartered in Nairobi in Kenya. And uh, you was directly confronted with the problem of the people there, and you know there's a need to fight poverty, not because only of humanitarian reasons, but simply because if you cannot handle this, you will have the mo mobilization of those people. What we are seeing now is one or the other good reason exactly for that. And I came back and I was very convinced if you want to do something seriously with regard to the globalization of the destruction of poverty on a global level, you need energy. And that it is a need for a developed countries to develop those technologies, not giving another burden to the future in using those. Things. That was my start, and to say, if not 
in a country like Germany to start with technology, where else? Of course, on the first view, you come to the conclusion it's a very stupid idea. So you may know that Germany has an average per year 900 solar hours. 900 solar hours. That's something 10% of the available hours per year. And we start solar energy. If you go already to Greece, you are to 2,500 solar hours. If you go to the northern chair, the southern uh, shore of the Mediterranean, you have over 3,000. So if you compare the one or the other, say in Dubai it was five, they have more than 3,000 uh, solar hours that should be better than in the case we have 900. And all my friends, uh, if you are in a pub at home and have a good glass of beer, it was a very good idea. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> by the way, by the way, by the way. And they come back and say, why the devil are we investing? And we started, honestly, I, in those days I was uh, a minister here in this country, we started this feed in tariffs. That was, let me say, not directly linked with climate change. It was much more uh, the consideration, how can we back uh, the agricultural lobby? What can we do with small um, uh, water power stations? And we paid then by chance also for solar, and we paid for one kilowatt hour in those days more than a euro for one kilowatt hour. Absolutely stupid. But it was not paid by the budget, it was paid by all of us. So first and foremost, I want to thank the German consumer of electricity that they did it. <laughs> in the very beginning, one uh, euro per kilowatt hour was not a huge problem because we produce only a little, little, little bit and if you have uh, uh, 80, not 90, 80 <laughs> million uh, inhabitants you can subdivide it, you cannot see it. And we were in those days absolutely convinced if it is not possible to have a learning curve for social, uh, solar, you can forget it. We had to use this time to invest in science, in technical development, and to give a chance for economies of scale. And now we are down for more than one euro. In Germany, 900 solar hours, below, well below 10 euro cent. And I give you the clear information, even if we start tomorrow morning to stop all direct or indirect subsidization for solar that may have a little curve for the next two or three years in investment, and then it is running. It is true what you mentioned, yes. If we go in a direction that energy, electricity, is a consumer good, it is not any longer infrastructure. You will have your own electricity system at home as you have your own car. And this is a chance that those big companies now, they lost their business case and they're now looking for a new business case and if you have an eye on the decision of Aon, it's exactly echoing in this direction. Exactly in this direction. They want to be the company, the biggest uh, uh, electricity company without producing electricity. That is fascinating, as we have the biggest taxi company without taxis. <laughs> and you have the biggest uh, retailer uh, 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 company without shops. without shops and without uh, storage, nothing. And the biggest hotel. And therefore what is missing here still is the question that we have to link this urgent least with the question of big data of the Internet of Things, because these will be the main player in this market. These will be the main player. And therefore, to invest in those direction is not, that's my own uh, real question to you, not because we are good people and that we are uh, uh, stick to social topics and we want to save the world. Yes, we want to do it as well, no doubt. But it is a business case. Let me finish this, you could go on quite a long time, as you may imagine. Maybe the one or the other of the Germans I remember that um, in, after Fukushima, the Chancellor decided to have an ethic commission and she asked me to be one of the leaders of this. 
if you are old, you cannot say no. He says, <laughs> <laughs> you, you never know whether they ask you again. And therefore, you said, yes, yeah, fine. And then we had our first meeting and she invited us to the chancellery and then she mentioned that she is extremely surprised that somebody in Germany has some money on the bank account <laughs> because that they are not all investing in solar. If you see the return on investment of those, if you go through Germany and see a lot of solar panel or wind energy, you, you know of <laughs> <yeah. laughs> <laughs> But is a beer like I asked for in Scotland or England or something, <laughs> else, something else? So, nevertheless, it's a good, a good idea, no doubt. Anyhow, uh, of course, uh, you see all this and you are aware, oh, the Germans are very ecologically aware and they are doing something. I can inform you the Germans are very good calculating how to you, you earn money. It is a very, very good business. Ask uh, uh, the farmers who offer some uh, location for wind energy. 80,000 per year as a rent for such a topic in good location. 80,000. If you have five of this, you can send your cows home. <laughs> it's no need for it. Therefore, to be, to be very clear, maybe I'm cynical. Maybe I'm cynical, but you can only rely on a sustainable development, exactly what you mentioned, if you can prove it is a business case. It is really a business case. And this is now possible thanks to the German who paid for their electricity bill an extra price compared to our friends in France or in Italy or wherever. Yes, we have 28 euro cents per kilowatt hour, not only with regard to the production of the electricity, but also on the grid and all the other, and taxes, 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 because we want to be rid of a black uh, or red uh, target in our budget. So all this is, I believe, to add. Uh, and therefore, this is going back to my start. My message when I go back to Africa, quite now, quite a lot of uh, friends there. They come back and say, Klaus, great, you did it. You was the reason for that, that we can now use this for a price we never could imagine mm -hmm. before. It is also linked with the system cops. They can make ice island solutions. They don't need integrated nets. In Germany, that is a disastrous additional problem. In those countries, it is an advantage. Therefore, excuse me to be a little bit longer, knowing that uh, my good old friend Ernst Ulri has to go to the railway station. But, you know, <laughs> it's always the same if you give an old minister a microphone. Be aware, you need a bit more. Thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you.